Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you tuned in this morning because this is the space where we get to learn about God. I have to tell you though, I really miss you. I miss your smiles and I miss your laughter. I miss your giggles and your wiggles. I even miss that occasional frown and yawn. I can't wait for us to see each other again and we will, one day we will. For now, before we dive into our lesson, I just wanna say that I know so many of you participated in the Global 6K and I wanna tell you, well done, good job. You shine the light of God's love um, to people around you and certainly to the children in Congo that are going to have water for life because of your efforts. Good job. You may notice that I have some um, photos behind me. These are children in the Congo who are sponsored by families at our church. And if you have a sponsored child, send me a picture of that sponsored child because I would love to see this, um, this collage on my wall grow. Well, all this month we're talking about determination, and determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you've started. Sometimes we get ourselves in a sticky situation, or we find ourselves in a sticky situation, and determination is what we need to get unstuck. And God is the source of that determination for so many of us and in so many ways. He can always be there to help us get that. So this morning's lesson is about a sticky situation comes to us from the book of Acts, chapters 3 and 4, and it's a couple, well, I was going to say a couple days, but it's sometime after Pentecost. And I want you to listen as I go through the story with some pictures. I want you to listen for who you think is stuck and unstuck by the end of this story, okay? Here we go. Okay, see the man on the mat? He was a man that couldn't walk. He was sick and... Um, he couldn't make money because he couldn't walk, he couldn't work. So his friends brought him to the temple gate every day and he would beg for money. And um, this is Peter and John and they're on their way to temple and he asks them for money. And they're like, look at us. Do we look like we have money? But you know what? We're gonna do you something better. Peter says to him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Does this sound familiar? It does come from a song. Some of you might know it. Scriptures tell us that the man's ankles and feet suddenly grew strong, strong enough that he could stand, and then he was walking with Peter and John to temple. He was walking and he was um, uh, jumping and he was praising God all the way. Well, people around him saw him and they knew instantly who he was. They recognized him because they'd seen him before. He'd been in front of the temple gate for years, day after day begging. They knew a miracle had happened. And they were also amazed and Peter responded to them. He gathered them around and he began teaching and John did too. They began teaching and talking about Jesus. But one of the things that Peter said is this, this man whom you see and know was made strong by faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus healed him completely. They were happy to hear this news, the crowd was. But these guys, not so much. These are the religious leaders. These are the guys that had Jesus arrested and crucified in the first place. They did not like that Peter and John were talking about Jesus, that they were saying that he was the son of God, that they were saying that Jesus resurrected. They did not like that they, that they were healing people the way Jesus did, and they didn't like how the crowd was responding. So they had Peter and John arrested. And that night in jail, I'm sure, it was a tough night for Peter and John. You know, they saw Jesus be arrested. And they, know what, they knew what happened to him after he was arrested. I'm sure they were scared. I'm sure they were uncertain of what was happening. I'm sure they remembered um, how so many people reacted poorly. I'm sure they remembered a lot of the trials that Jesus went through. I'm also sure that they remembered Pentecost and that they knew God was with them. Well, the next day they were called before the leaders to explain themselves. And the religious leaders say, said to them, by what power did you do this thing? So listen to this from Acts 
chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. It says, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, are you asking us to explain ourselves today? Do you want to know why we were so kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Then listen to this, you and all of Israel. You nailed Jesus Christ to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed in front of you today. Well, the religious leaders didn't really know what to do with this whole situation. They didn't like anything that was happening. They wanted it to stop. In fact, they thought all of this Jesus talk would stop when Jesus was crucified. But it didn't. And they didn't know what to do. But they couldn't, they couldn't hold Peter and John in prison any longer. They didn't really have a crime that they could um, charge them with. Everybody saw that the miracle really did happen. Everybody knew it, and they couldn't dispute it. So in the end, they decided to let Peter and John go. But they gave them lots of warnings, and they said, keep quiet or else. Okay, we're going to play a game called Stuck or Unstuck. If you get the right answer, you get 500 points. I'm going to ask you three questions. Let's start with the sick man. Was he stuck or unstuck? Well, he was able to walk for the first time, and he was able to go to temple instead of sit in front of the gate, and this also meant that he could work. Do you think he was stuck or unstuck? He was unstuck. Okay. The religious leaders, stuck or unstuck, they did not like what was happening. They did not want a Jesus movement happening. That's why they crucified Jesus. They tried to arrest Paul and Peter, but they couldn't keep him more than one night because they didn't have a reason to. And keep in mind, they thought crucifying Jesus would stop the Jesus movement. I said that already, but what I didn't tell you is that after Peter and John were arrested, more people decided to follow Jesus. And by now, there were 5,000 people from Pentecost to this day that decided to follow Jesus. The church was growing and they didn't know how to stop it and they didn't know what to do. So they had to let Peter and John go. Were they stuck or unstuck? They were so stuck. 500 points if you got that right. Okay, Peter and John, were they stuck or unstuck? They were arrested for doing what Jesus told them to do, for teaching and talking about him, for making disciples. They were arrested for healing that man and they were, they were um, stuck in jail and they weren't sure what was gonna happen. They also had to stand before people and explain themselves. And that could have been a scary thing to do, to stand before the people that could imprison them. But you know what, they were bold in their answers because the Holy Spirit was with them. So let me ask you, are you stuck or unstuck? If you're standing in front of the people who could imprison you or worse, and they tell you, keep quiet or else, and we'll let you go. And you say to them, no, uh-uh. Because that's what Peter and John did. They said, we have to speak about the things that we've seen and heard. And guess what? They were let go anyway. Stuck or unstuck? Unstuck! That's right. Boys and girls, we, get uns we can get stuck in all kinds of situations. And maybe you're stuck right now because you're trying to learn how to tie your shoe or ride a unicycle. Or maybe you're trying to learn how to read or do your times tables. I don't know. Whatever the situation is, just like the disciples faced a really tough night in prison and they kept going, keep going when it gets tough. And if you're in a different kind of situation, one that you don't know how to get out of, I want you to know that you can ask God. Ask God to help you know who you can talk to about what's going on or where you can get help or what you can do. Ask God and keep asking God over and over again. Remember, it took that um, man that couldn't walk a long time, many years before he was healed. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that's gonna happen for you because Peter and John were only in prison for one night. But what you can count on is that God is with you through all of it. Right now, we're going to continue in worship. And as we do, you can sing along with Pastor Tim or dance along with Pastor Tim. Or maybe you just need to come before God and ask God to show you where in your life you're stuck and to show you the way to get unstuck.